So first of all, here's the tangent of x, ladies and gentlemen. And the tangent of x has a little bit different characteristics. So again, remember we talked about our initial period, right? So the tangent of x has asymptotes. Because if you guys remember, remember when we were evaluating on the unit circle, tangent is y over x, right? So think about pi. At the angle pi, what coordinate point is that on the unit circle? That's negative 1, 0, right? Oh, that's at pi. I'm thinking of pi half, so why don't I go to pi half? So I did too many. Oops, not pi. That's at pi half, because it's pi. Pi divided by pi divided by b. That's right. Sorry about that. So pi halves. If you guys look at the point pi halves, which is the same as 90 degrees, that coordinate point is 0, 1, right? So 1 over 0, because remember tangent is y over x, 1 over 0 is undefined, correct? OK. So the initial period, ah, what am I doing? I'm making this step. So the initial period of tangent looks like this. Cross at 0. OK. And that's it. Basically, that's what tangent looks like. So this is what we call our initial period. And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, if you're to continue, tangent's going to go on and on forever, right? But I want you guys to understand things. So I graphed two periods. What is the difference? What is this difference between these two periods as far as their intercepts? How far is that? How far is that distance? Pi, right? So remember, for sine and cosine, the initial period, it started repeating itself at 2 pi, right? Whereas tangent now repeats itself at pi. So tangent, amplitude. Amplitude is the half distance between the highest and the lowest. Does this graph ever stop going up? Does it ever stop going down? So guess what? There is no amplitude. OK? Period. Now is just going to be pi divided by b. OK? Um, your x scale. There's two ways to do this. Um, I have kind of got brought into x scale. The best way to do this is take your period, divide it by 4 still. So that's going to remain the same. What that technically does, though, is that helps you graph it as far as your constraint. Because what happens is, do you guys remember a quadratic? If I had y equals 3x squared compared to y equals 1 third x squared, what did this 3 do? What did the 3 do to the graph? It stretched it, right? And what did the 1 third do? You could say it shrunk it, right? Compressed it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is no difference than this. What do you think the 3 is going to do? Stretch it. What do you think the 1 is going to do? Compress it, right? So instead, the graph might look like this or look like that, OK? But it's still going to be the same. So if you use the x scale, the x scale can help you find those other points to do that, all right? Um, you have your period. Phase shift is still going to be bx minus c equals 0, vertical transformations equal to d. Where am I getting all these again? Tangent or A, tangent of Bx minus C plus D. So do you guys see how the transformation, the, the equation is exactly the same? 
Huh? <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is make a distinction for you. If you remember when graphing quadratics, 3, what that did was that stretched the graph. It made it skinnier. So if I was graphing 3 tangent of x, what I'm saying is that's going to make that graph skinnier. Then if you remember 1 third x, that like made it fatter, right? Compressed it. Well, 1 third tangent of x would make it fatter. Same thing. Does it make sense? OK, so I was just making a comparison. So the really the only thing new that we're learning about this is now graphing tangents has asymptotes, um, has asymptotes at pi halves and a negative pi halves with a period of pi. Okay, so you're going to have a period of pi. And that's really the only difference. As far as the transformations and everything else, that's it. Now, the, you could look at the domain. The domain is different now. The domain is, domain we could say is all real numbers except our input, whatever our input is, x cannot equal, what cannot, uh, x cannot equal pi halves plus what? Well, how far does it go from my first asymptote to my next asymptote? Pi. And how many times could I add pi? N. And my range is going to be how low does this graph go? Negative infinity. How high? Pi infinity. Is there any extrema? Is there any maximums or mins? No, it goes to infinity, right? Is it bounded at all? No. You could say that the graph is increasing from one asymptote to the, to the turning point, and then it, um, actually it's increasing the whole time, right? It's actually always increasing, right? It's increasing from one interval to not. It's not decreasing at all, correct? Is everybody OK with that? So the only thing I want to show you now real quick is what cotangent